in this in this uh, talk, I will uh, talk you about. I will tell you about something um, we obtained. We been worked for last during the last year has been the attempt to coarse grain in heterogeneous system interacting system in terms of networks. Okay, so. Uh, uh, in 1979, Kenneth Wilson uh, published a seminal paper where he put the attention on the necessity to study the fluctuations that uh, are present at, at, uh, uh, at, a rather, at a wide range, in a wide range of sizes of scales in uh, uh, physical systems of magnets and fluids. And he grounded his, uh, or he grounded his work on the uh, pioneer uh, work of um, uh, Carlo Di Castro and Gianni Alasinio in uh, the physics department of Rome. And he uh, explained that the, the, the way to treat this kind of problem is to borrow uh, a, a, a framework that was already uh, used in the quantum field theory, that is the renormalization group. But when you have system where a metric distance is not easy to be, to define so the, the metric distance among the interacting objects interacting objects of your of your system cannot be defined the normalization group and the normalization process is not, is not trivial however several attempts have been done and the most uh, uh, promising has been the uh, geometrical embedding of networks so the idea is to try to fit your uh, network to some geometric space, typically hyperbolic, uh, the hyperbolic space, and over that to define uh, Euclidean, Euclidean metric spaces. What, uh, what, uh, what we've done has been to avoid any embedding, avoid any fitting of your network, because of course it depends on the network you are, and the system that you are finding, because the, the fit could be good, the fit could be bad, so it's not a, a, a process that is linear and easy to do for all the systems you can uh, investigate. We use a different approach. We studied the diffusion over the network. So you start considering each node as um, being composed of, of, inform of information that can spread through the network, it can reach all of the other nodes in the network. And the equation for the diffusion, the, net, the diffusion is the, uh, the well-known x dot uh, equal to minus nabla square x, where the element of this vector, of course, is the information at uh, the site i. So in the combinatorial representation, so in a, in a discrete description of this equation, you have to use the Laplacian, Laplacian matrix. The Laplacian is okay you can solve this equation and, and the solution is that you have a, a propagator of the diffusion in some sense given by the exponential of the minus the Laplacian by the time mm -hmm. so the Laplacian is the difference the matrix in the Laplacian matrix is difference between a diagonal degree matrix where the diagonal degree matrix is a diagonal matrix with the entries on the diagonal equal to the summation over the rows or the columns of the adjacency matrix and the adjacency matrix is a symmetric matrix that says that where there is a connection between two nodes the matrix is then directed and also unsigned of course so it is symmetric and there are several uh, Properties, very interesting properties of L of the Laplacian matrix. This is also called the combinatorial Laplacian. Okay. Uh, first of all, it is positive, semi-definite, and symmetric. Okay, so eigenvalues are real. Mm -hmm. And we know that the, uh, the spectrum of the Laplacian have already been used and the uh, and, and the associated eigenvector. Uh, uh, um, has already been used to cluster nodes in PCA-like methods. And we know that the spectrum is always, uh, the eigenvalues are all uh, larger or equal to zero, and you have a number of zeros equal to the number of connected components you have. So if you have a fully connected network, so you then have 
isolated nodes or isolated process, you have just one zero and all positive eigenvalues. Otherwise, you have several zeros according to the number of components you can recognize in your network. And we know that large lambda, large eigenvalues associated with fast diffusion modes, so small scales, so the, 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 what is diffusing is, arrives instantaneously, okay? So fast diffusion modes, while small lambda are related to um, slow diffusion modes, so the information arrives to, to the rest, to, to the, to, to the uh, periphery of your, of your network. So given these properties, we can think to uh, define a probability, so a time-dependent probability measure over the eigenvector of the Laplacian, given by the um, exponential of minus the eigenvalue of the Laplacian by multiplied by the time divided by the uh, partition function z. Okay, that is the summation of the uh, exponential over to all, all the eigenvalues. So in zeros at t equal to zero, so you have this, this uh, uh, probability uh, distribution is one over n. So information is. Uh, in, or over each node. So nodes are isolated in principle. While for t that goes to infinity, you have a delta and the information are reached all the networks, of the, all the nodes of the network. Once you have defined a probability, you can, oh, so one of the big goals, since you are uh, imagining to, uh, to deal with information flowing within the network, you can use the Shannon entropy to measure the end, exactly, the entropy over P, over the probability that we uh, uh, defined uh, before. So the probability is obviously minus P log P, and this is a measure of the logarithm of the number of informationally uh, connected clusters of nodes, okay? If you have a, uh, a D entropy, you can also think to study the divergences over the entropy. So you can uh, calculate the, 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 deriv the derivative of the entropy with respect to the log t, logarithm of t, and you obtain what is called the entropic susceptibility. So every divergence in C, that is the entropic susceptibility, are associated with structural phase transitions, exactly as phase, trans phase transitions in uh, condensed matter investigation. Uh, in 2016, Maglio de Domenico proposed a different framework, an operatorial framework, uh, to describe these kind of problems. So he introduced the density operator, the density operator, is essentially oh this an uh, arrow here you have the 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 operator uh, Laplacian that's okay density operator and uh, uh, instead of using the probability distribution and so the the, the entropy is uh, uh, calculated as minus the trace of rho log rho but the rho being the density matrix okay and z is the uh, um, the partition function. This is the von Neumann entropy. And you can calculate all the stuff that we have calculated with the probability distribution with the density matrix. Once you have this framework, you can map what we know from quantum statistical mechanics to networks. So you have an, an Hamiltonian, which is Hermitian and bounded below. <clears throat> and in network, we have uh, the Laplacian, which is Hermitian and bounded below. You can define the density matrix in the two frameworks. You can define an entropy in the two frameworks, and you can define a specific heat in quantum field theory and the entropic susceptibility and network framework in the network description. So why, why, uh, while in, in quantum statistical mechanics, uh, the divergence of the uh, specific heat associated with a phase transition, here we are also a critical point in phase transition, in networks, a divergence or peak in the entropic susceptibility can be associated to a structural phase transition, something about the network that you are investigating while diffusion and spreading in your network is changing. It's changing in terms of what you can 
considered as the interacting systems classing one with the other. Uh, objects that classing one with ag agents clustering one with the other. And it is the case of an endos running uh, random graph. Mm -hmm. Here on the right, you can see the uh, entro entropy and the uh, entropic susceptibility. Okay. And you can see that you have one peak, exactly one peak, and one phase transition. So structure of phase transition in your network, which is the, the phase transition that you are, uh, mm, that you can uh, observe on these curves exactly a one over a specific tau, a specific time, is the percolation. So the diffusion starts from each node and after tau pit, so after this time here, the information reach all the node, reaches all the nodes of the network. Instantaneously, it's that percolation process. Hmm? Again, it's in the previous, um, uh, yes, is is the the property of the information necessary or? Uh, in, no, it's just a mapping. The important, what you need is that you are a symmetric, uh, uh, positive semi-definite uh, uh, matrix to run all the framework because you want you you need. Uh, real thinking bodies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, and this is the case of the end of trend random graph. An important property of the uh, susceptibility is that when the susceptibility is constant, you have a particular property of you can obtain a particular uh, property of your network. And let's see which is this property. So let's develop the, the entropy here. <clears throat> you can write these are the trace of this object. The uh, row, this one is row, okay? So this row, log row is written this way. So it is essentially a constant plus the average uh, as a function of t of the spectrum multiplied by the time, hmm? okay? So when you calculate C, the calculation C returns you minus t squared, the derivative of the uh, time of the average of, of the um, eigenvalues. Now, if C is constant, this is the solution. If uh, you are consider a continuous uh, approximation of your Laplacian spectrum for small lambda, you can introduce a density of uh, a probability density of again values that can return you this relation that is uh, that has a solution only for the density distribution of lambdas that has a, a, that is a power law. So only a power law is a solution of this kind of equation. On the other way, what you can do is to consider the same uh, continuous uh, uh, approximation. Uh, the this uh, the, the, the lead summation goes to uh, the interval version, and what you can do is that this is the essentially two gamma Euler gamma functions, okay? These two integrals, these ratios. So you can solve this, and you know that this constant so is equal to gamma plus one. So to summarize. Every time your susceptibility is constant, you are in front of a scale invariant system. It's not a scale free network. A scale free, you have a power law of degrees. So the power, the, the density distribution of the degrees, so the number of connections that each node has, has a power law. Here, we took him, we're talking about a scale invariants. So the network seems to have the same property of fluctuations of interactions at each size that you want to investigate it. Okay? So it's, it's a very important property and we will see that there is uh, some uh, cons important consumers about this. This is the scale of a random tree, for example. So if you have a random tree with a finite mean branch ratio hmm, and a finite variance, you can calculate is is uh, um, susceptibility and susceptibility is constant around 0.5, okay? So you don't have a peak <clears throat> and you have some geometrical scaling variance of the tree, okay? 
You can also calculate the susceptibility for the unheard uh, Barabasi Albert uh, network. Barabasi Albert is uh, uh, a preferential attachment based on the preferential attachment model. So you uh, 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 in a network and new node is attached at a time, uh, bridging only one edge. So we are talking about Barabasi Albert model with m equal one. So every time a node is attached with one, only one edge. Okay, and is attached to a net, to one node the, uh, with a probability that is proportional to the degree of that node. This this is because uh, you call it a preferential attachment. So you can see that not only as we know you have for a Barabasi Albert with m equal one uh, scale free property. So the scale the, the the probability of the degrees in a Barabasi Albert is PDK equal to k two minus three. So it's a power law. But you have also a scale invariance. Okay. This is not true if you consider a Barabasi Albert where uh, a node attached to the network with more than one node. Okay. And in fact, if you calculate the uh, with m equal to m equal four uh, Barabasi Albert uh, susceptibilities, you obtain a peak. So, and this is due to the fact that adding edges means adding loops that destroy your scale invariance, okay? Uh, in order to, now we have uh, observed some properties that you can investigate with the, with the tools coming from the Laplacian, uh, the properties of the Laplacian matrix. But if you want to uh, set out a, a, a meter to scrutinize your network. So to say, to, in a sense, to binarize your network according to the properties of connections of information diffusion. What you can do is to take your density operator, density matrix, and normalize by the minimum value given to nodes i and j. So the information that i and j exchange must be <clears throat> larger the information the minimum information contained in i and in j okay so if you define if you normalize the row ij by the minimum between row ii and row ajj so two elements of the diagonal and you can use the heavy side function and define in a sense a binarization of your network this is, this is the request to find which are the more important patterns of communication in, in your network. And you can see for this simulation that when you, this is the, for example, the uh, diffusion of information starting from each, from all the nodes in the stochastic block model, you can see the stochastic block model, the two peaks due to the two structure that you can obtain, two peaks are information, the first peak, the formation arrives to the four blocks, and at the end, the information reaches all the nodes of, of your network, okay? So you can do it the same uh, calculation, the same simulation for high hierarchical modular core periphery. So you have a core, a periphery that uh, is uh, uh, repeated hierarchically. And so you can see that the information diffused on the network according to the uh, proper structure of the core periphery. So you can see that at the end, it arrives to the uh, block. So it's a nested nested uh, uh, network. Uh, we investigated the same uh, property of the diffusion, the, the, the density matrix using the human connectome. So here we are considering uh, uh, structural connections between regions of the brain. So you consider the cortex and you uh, measure the physical connections between portions of the cortex. You have the connectome, so the, these connections are your links. The nodes are regions of interest that connect so the cortex. So you can have a different resolution, different resolution of your segmentation or, or parcelization of your cortex. And what uh, you you can obtain, uh, you can do it. Uh, 
uh, calculate is on a weighted and a binarized network, but I will explain in a while just the difference. And this is how the information flow within the net, within the connector, starting from all the nodes of the network. Uh, binarized, you binarize your uh, network so to keep on one every connection zero if there is no connection, but you can weight each connection according to the number of fibers that connect two regions. Because uh, with MRI, you obtain this kind of information. With MRI, you can uh, measure in some way, you can uh, fit the diffusion processes uh, of water uh, along the bundles of axons, and you can calculate, uh, calculate how many bundles of axons go from a nose to another. So you can wait according to this kind of information. Uh, what, we have, what we have found has been that there is a portion of the network where the information arises before then the other parts of the network. So we call it the information core, okay? So this is the how the the, the network is the, the nodes are reached by uh, diffusion from the core of the network by moving this tau, and these are the two uh, um, information core for binary and for weighted uh, connecton. It means that we cut all the edges where information didn't travel. Okay, so there's not. Uh, uh, um, uh, decimation due to any kind of, of uh, prior. We, if all the nodes are reached by the, uh, the, the, the information diffusing over the network, you uh, stop the diffusion process and you take the, the links that include in this, in this process. And we have investigated if this information core has some important uh, uh, property in terms of uh, uh, the dynamics that can run over this kind of network. In fact, we uh, put Kuromotor oscillators on each node, and this is the Kuromotor dynamics, so you are the, the, deriv the, 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 the derivative. So time variation of the oscillation is equal to a, const a frequency, a proper frequency, plus a, a, a coupling strength of node with the other nodes is constant. In this case, this is the adhesion C matrix, and this is the sinus of the difference between the phases of node I and node J. So you can see this uh, uh, process of uh, oscillation plus uh, a wide Gaussian noise with some amplitude. If you calculate the Kuromoto order parameter that says when to uh, when uh, the system uh, arrives to a synchronization, a full synchronization, so the nodes are synchronized, what you can see is that if you calculate the Kuromoto parameter uh, or the parameter in, in terms of the, the coupling constant K, and you calculate the, the variance of this um, Kuromoto parameter across time, each peak of this variance is associated to a phase transition of the synchronization. So when the system reaches the peak, the system is synchronized. So all the nodes are synchronized. So what you can see is that the information core synchronized before, you know why, in some sense, than the wool, than the wool network. And this is not uh, 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 um, it's not surprising because uh, in 2006 uh, Alex Arena demonstrated that for a full synchronization with the Guru model, model, if you consider if you um, simplify this model considering zero all the intrinsic frequencies, uh, zero the uh, noise and uh, uh, equal phases across uh, across oscillators, the Kuromoto dynamics is uh, governed by the Laplacian. Okay. This has been uh, demonstrated by Alex Arenas. And this is what you obtained in terms for, of the way the way that you might connect on, but the same runs for all the models that we uh, investigated. So scale free is a Barabasi Albert, stochastic block model, and hierarchical core periphery. So now we have all the ingredients to do what we want to do. So we have the Laplacian framework, and we want to use this 
framework. So the property of diffusion information in the network to try to coarse grain the network, putting together nodes according to some properties of the network itself. And this is what has been done in, um, at the end of the last century by Kenneth Wilson. And what you can do typically is to define block variables uh, by integrating out fast modes. And then you uh, cause grain, rescale time, and redefine coupling constants. This is the process that you use for renormalization group. Hmm? But what uh, have been done uh, in the uh, Wilson approach has been to use a regular lattice. So you imagine that you're in uh, interrupting agents are on a regular lattice. So on a regular lattice, the uh, uh, propagator of, of, of interaction is, of course, the uh, plane waves. Um, and what he, uh, what he did is being, OK, I group nodes in the lattice, forming what are known the Cardano block in the real space. And the uh, criterion that I use to group nodes is based on what I can uh, investigate in the reciprocal space, where there is the uh, transfer of interaction among nodes. Okay, and the transfer interaction is mediated by the the, the, the translation. Okay, the, the translation is uh, is governed by the plane waves. So. In our case, we don't have any regular lattice. We don't have any chance to use translation, but we use diffusion. So instead of using the uh, k square that are, eigen uh, that are the eigenvalues of the ma minus lambda square and the eigenvector are represented by the uh, this wave, we used our operator and the eigenvalue, eigenvector, these operators are the ones that we used to justify our pattern of blocks. And this is the scheme. Let's imagine you have your Laplacian, the Laplacian that is specific of your, of your network. Okay, And you can uh, write this in terms of the eigenvectors. So you develop it in the eigenvectors uh, uh, that is an autonomous basis uh, since the system is medium. Um, and you say that, I know that I want to integrate out all the fast diffusion modes. So I cut the summation up to a certain value lambda of the game values, which is equal to one over a specific characteristic time, the time at which you have the uh, uh, you can discriminate between fast and slow diffusion modes. So you set this T star and you set up a new Laplacian and you have a certain description of your system. So how can you put together the, we have done this in the reciprocal space. Now we want to go back to the real space. How can, how can I put together uh, the nodes in the Cardano block. What we did has been take your density operator, that your density matrix, and which is a, a function of time, and calculate it at the T star, which is the point where you can discriminate fast and slow modes. If you use the information integration condition, there will be, there will form naturally blocks of nodes isolate them one respect to the other. They are our cadence blocks. And then we connect these cadence blocks according to pre-existing links between nodes belonging to the two blocks, for example, okay? So you have an augment to cut, to reduce your Laplacian because you are reducing your space because instead of uh, the summation, instead of going from one to n, it will go to from one to n minus m. You will form m, and you will have n minus m blocks, okay, in principle. And the blocks are built according to this law. It's 
not easy to see because it doesn't exist even in quantum theoretical uh, in quantum uh, free theory a direct mapping between the pattern of uh, the renormalization in the direct space and the renormalization in the uh, reciprocal space it, it doesn't exist a mapping however what you can do is to uh, explain what is the physical reason for building those kind of blocks and then in the real space you create these blocks by using this uh, decimation decimation rule so what you can do is do Sorry. yeah is it, is it guaranteed that that new made uh, new network that you get the, the four train network mm -hmm. does it have the same spectrum of the Russian operator as mm -hmm. the truncated one yeah you you retain you retain what you have is you you retain the same eigenvalues what you 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 have is that you don't have more if you start from an um, binary adjacency matrix when you reconstruct your new Laplacian it will be weighted it won't be more uh, uh, binary and so you binarize with this re, 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 according to this rule but the eigenvalues are, are guaranteed even after binarizing yeah yeah maybe translated compared to other methods like would you then uh select in the exactly spectral gap this uh n minus n or, or uh, uh, you, the idea is that you have to select your t star so where where is your t star in principle when the um, susceptibility entropic susceptibility have the first divergence so when the derivative of the susceptibility have a change okay so in principle this could be this is an example here this is in this gray stripe you can select a t star that allows you to renormalize the barabasi albert model okay and this is because but it is i, I cannot spoil the uh, results we obtained uh, that uh, and that we are uh, publishing an archive in a couple of months or, or, or months one half it is because at, in, within this stripe you can describe the process that arrives to the uh, in in this in this in, at this time the the uh, front way the, the the front of the wave of diffusion that is starting from each node so that sum up across nodes and form your cutoff block reach exactly the cluster that you need at the time so in this stripe all the diffusion waves that are moving from a node to the other construct and set up uh, positively an hypersurface where that, that is exactly the block that you can obtain by putting T star in the row. So there is a physical reason for this T star. And here you have to cut the system. And this process happens when you have the first divergence of your, of your uh, susceptibility. And it's guaranteed that there is the always divergence. Mm -hmm. If there is a no, for example, no, because for example, in uh, uh, in the Erdo Shreni, the fixed point uh, is a point. It's not a normalization of the graph because, due to percolation, after tau peak, how will we call it, you, all the information are, uh, reaches all the nodes in the network. So, over there, you don't have, you cannot renormalize an Erdo Shreni, okay? Because the, the fixed point is just one node. While if you have a structure, that can be renormalized. So you have some invariance of the, in, the properties of interaction uh, uh, between nodes, different scales. You have a structure, you can renormalize it. Hmm? Uh, 
you know, for the second part, I think, sorry, uh, the second about the, the decimation yeah. of the other empirical approach, which just decimate based on validation. Like if you get to know the primitive merge, you get the one to higher validation or any other similarity. Are you changing your method with this uh, analogy, but more information? Uh... I think that the, the decimation uh, you have in principle to calculate your matrix at the specific T star that you that is guaranteed for you that you can in somewhere put nodes together and then you can decimate in the with the meter that you want. This, this is the, the, the meter that we uh, suggested, but if you have a, more efficient or more easy to explain method is good. But the problem is that this one is the approach that you use to <clears throat> form the cut of blocks, to isolate cut of blocks. But once you have T star in your uh, density matrix, you have uh, integrated out all the fast modes. And so, in that case, you, what you have to do is to try to isolate the different blocks. So, if you use, if you can use this approach, but you can use another approach. It's exactly the same. These are the uh, renormalization of okay, the regular lattice, the random tree, the stochastic block model that finishing for nodes, of course, and the Wastrogas uh, small world network. And this is <clears throat> the renormalization of the Barabasi model. And you see that the scale invariance, uh, okay, the, the scale freeness is guaranteed across all the normalization steps. And the scale invariance of the, uh, the Barabasi model is, can be seen from this tree-like structure that is preserved across the renormalization steps. So the fact is that the Barabasi model is quite a tree, okay? This L here is related to some T star? Uh, L are the, yes, uh, L are the different uh, steps of renormalization. So this is the first, this is the L0 is the original Barabasi Albert. Then you have the first step of renormalization. Then you have the second step of renormalization. With a given T star? You with a given T star for each, for each, uh, of course, uh, for each, uh, for each network. Comparing to the regular Lazi, you just cross grain we get the size gets uh, often as half of the. Compared the, with. Comparing to the regular Lazi, the ah. next the new. No, yeah. So do you know exactly how it behaves the the new decimated uh, Lazi? So it. Uh, it's just a renormalization. We don't know which nodes goes where, but you can. Take uh, you can label your nodes and understand what they what, what they want in a regular lattice. Of course, <clears throat> is a, the first neighbor is a first neighbor system uh, approach apart the boundary effect. Of, of course, but in principle, in principle, you are uh, cost greening the first neighbors. Okay, but here <clears throat> first in in a Barabasi Albert, the first neighbors can be. Of different you know, the different numbers, so it's not a regular regular description. But in principle, yes, yes, of course. So you have a stock criteria then, or, or how do you? A stock criteria to stop your randomization yeah. when you feel you, you when you arrive to a single yeah. node. Yes. So these are the scales that you can span and you can investigate of your network. The lower back is the degree distribution of the renormalized. Yeah. Okay. This is the degree distribution of the renormalized uh, networks that is always uh, power law. Uh, a possible uh, application of this uh, of this method uh, that we proposed is to uh, embed the renormalization group in a modularity or community detection uh, algorithm. Of course, in a, uh, what you need in principle is to uh, define a, a, a metric distance, okay? But we don't have any metric distance, so we defined an ultra metric, ultra metric distance, 
uh, what we call the, a communication of parametric distance, which is one over the density uh, operator, one minus delta of the density operator that satisfy this uh, this uh, condition for ultrametricity, ultrametricity. And the idea is that take your network, uh, use your uh, LRG, the partial organization group, to class your nodes and define your communication distance matrix. And thanks to a hierarchical classing algorithm, you uh, divide. So because you have a distance, you can divide the connections in, uh, in, in this uh, clustering tree. And then you obtain an optimal division of your cut your dendrogram, OK? And you obtain the optimal division of the communities. Is a, is a, uh, the the recipe. So, what is what, where is the, the the place where I have to put this cut? This is the the, the non-trivial decision. So you have the network. You apply. Uh, you transform your network into the communication distance matrix. Also, your application to the communication distance matrix. Let's say the density matrix move to the communication distance matrix. Then you apply the randomization group and apply also a hierarchical clustering and cut to obtain your uh, communities. Where is the point where you put this cut? Let's imagine this is your uh, uh, Instagram of, uh, of the clustering. You have a Dmax, a Dmin, where uh, this is the, the branches that give place to your clustering, given place by the uh, clustering algorithm. And you calculate the distance, so the length, for example, of this branch. Okay. And what we calculate is the partition stability index, which is the difference of the logarithm of dk and dk plus one. Okay. Normalized by the difference of the distance, the maximum distance that can be covered by the. Uh, the hierarchical clustering. So you calculate it at different gaps, gaps I mean different branches. And when you have a peak, you cut at that point your uh, hierarchical clustering and you can divide nodes in communities. The first, the first largest PSI marks the spot. So is the place where you have to dig in principle and we did it with for example with the Zagris Karate Club dividing the two communities but we did it also with the Lanciginetti Fortunato Radicchi which is a, a model for communities uh, in networks and you see that the first peak is the uh, the fourth step one two three fourth we use it also to uh, uh, obtain uh, um, communities in the Godsev God God Mendes uh, network, which is a pseudo-fractal network. And all the uh, known uh, algorithm for uh, community detection didn't succeed in finding the three communities that are expected uh, from a clustering of the nodes, while the LRG method, uh, uh, based on these on the distance of the diffusion of nodes allows you to discriminate the three groups. They are mixed or laden and form up and work trap and work trap uh, method. We applied it uh, also to uh, the protein protein interaction for Isurikia coli and mass musculus, these are rodent. Um, and we divided in different groups of different functional with different functional roles within the uh, uh, process of protein in the two species. So these are, for example, food, sugar transport and other electron transport within the uh, proteins, the cell the proteins that are responsible for cell cycle and cell deviation for the Escria coli. And here, these blue is um, uh, are nodes, are proteins that are related to some signal uh, processing immunity of the uh, of the species and, and this group that is this dot here, this circle here, are nodes responsible for uh, electron transport in the proteins. So in principle, what we have also found 
is that in this approach you can also uh, describe a local modularity so you have a modularity that is uh, that allows you to discriminate between for example here green red and uh, purple purple nodes with different functional rules but within the same network you can also do a further uh, discrimination of uh, 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 um, of the group of nodes according to the place where you put of course your your cut on your receiver okay Ah, okay this one mm, okay yeah so in other institutions did you have a same uh, pattern that yeah in principle most of this your systems are gap at the first or the second uh, have a peak at the first second gap this one have a peak at the fourth gap and for example you uh, in the pseudo fractal you have gaps that are equal at or uh, peaks at or gaps because this is a fractal so self-similar uh, yes another last application that is a, a very last uh, attempt to renormalize the human connectome. So we have the structural connectivity of the network. So these are uh, bundles of axons. And we investigated the chance you have, the, the, the property of the Lavlachian of this kind of network according to the network density. And we tried to renormalize this. So we uh, threshold this, so we banalize the network at three different values of uh, density, 3%, 1.7%, 1.3% .1 density of links of the network. <clears throat> and if you remember the property of constant, what is a constant, what, mean, what does it mean having a constant susceptibility and what is a peak? Hmm? And we observe that according to the three density conditions, you can obtain three different networks, exactly three different networks with three different properties. So one uh, uh, towards 1%, let's say, you are going towards a scale invariant network, while here, moving from 2% to 3%, let's say, you're moving towards uh, an endless shrine, so a random graph. So it means that the backbone of the connectome is scale invariant, but the brain is organized. Since it is organized to fail, it has a lot of loops that guarantee communication among regions that uh, resemble exactly a random shrine random graph. And we uh, focused on the 1.3% density network. These are the nodes uh, uh, colored according to the macro lobes they uh, belong, so civil, operator, temporal, so on, so forth, and so on, so forth. And we first uh, renormalized with one step by varying the tau of the T star. Okay, and you can see that for t equal to one, that is where I would put my uh, the definition of the fast and slow modes. You have a reasonable uh, uh, renormalization by increasing time. So increasing time means that you are integrating modes that are always slower, slower and slower. Um, and you obtain at the end to uh, at ten, 10 seconds, let's say, of tau, tau equal to 10, you obtain that you are going to a fixed point. So you are considering all the network together. So the fixed point is a node. Okay? So we uh, fix tau equal to 1. And this is the normalized four normalization steps of the connectome. And here we colored the nodes after each step according to uh, giving two nodes that enter in a cluster uh, a color according to the uh, majority 
of the members of that uh, of the class. So uh, if in a class there are a lot of frontal regions, the new macro node is called red, and so on and so forth. And you can see you can see that uh, <clears throat> by increasing the uh, this normalization, the normalization step, you move to the more densely populated uh, macro lobe in the, the brain, which is the uh, the frontal one. So, which is the take home message? In so the, yes, the tau is in seconds. Did you say that? I uh, think so. Yeah. Uh, so the take home message is uh, no, the first one is that information entropy and entropic sociability, susceptibility allows you to uh, detect the multi scale pattern of connectedness of a network. And then this diffusion basis of screening can generalize to the world well renowned and defined renormalization group scheme. And this uh, approach can be used useful and is powerful if embedded in a community detection algorithm. We have someone called this method a zoom in, zoom out approach. No, this is just a zoom out. Because this is there is this warning. Since the randomization group is a semi-group, every time you integrate out of the fastest modes, you are losing information. So you can go back to the final scale unless you have priors about the fire scale nose properties. And this is another approach to the organization group that is the, uh, the one proposed by Diego, by Diego Garlaschelli, Margarita Lalli and Elena Gararuccio that has been published this year. And I think it has been presented here one month ago by Diego or something like that. Let me thank all my colleagues, all the colleagues who participated in this study. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for that nice talk. I'm going to open the floor for questions. The first one already noted in the Zoom chat by Claudia. How do you justify the criteria for the cutoff choice for the hierarchical clustering? Um, so maybe. If Claudia, if you can hear us, maybe you can, uh, uh, if you want to ask a question yourself, or you can. Uh, well, no, sure. in principle. Yeah, I was just not understanding if it was like an arbitrary choice okay. or if there are some reason for, for choosing this first peak um, for your cutoff. Like, how do you cut off the, the hierarchical clustering algorithm? Yeah. Uh, you calculate it by considering the first peak of your stability index because these the first peak is the most stable across different choices of tau of the point at uh, time point at which you um, realize the normalization group. So the, stability, the first peak is the most, index. This, this is a partition stability index. Okay. So the, 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 the first peak is the uh, most stable across different time points for your, um, for the choice of your T star. And the D here is some type of distances between the, the point of branching. Sorry. The the D D K D K plus one etc. are some some type of distances between the different branches. Yes, it is. So is it like a integer distance or or, or no, not really. But it is, it, it, since they are a logarithm of a distance that is ten to something, yes, in principle they are uh, integer. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Well, very nice. I learned a lot. So I, maybe I didn't get this time criteria to make this idea of the gap, but I wonder whether it's simplified that approach for that. Like most of the time, uh, the Laplacian basis has a special uh, special gap, and then you put your select directly in the spectrum. But uh, uh, the spectral gap, which is the the the, the first uh, non-zero eigenvalue. 
is what you use the typically with the, the um, filter uh, eigenvector. So that it allows you to cluster your network. But the field uh, eigenvalue is, uh, uh, really, is related to a specific dynamic condition when every, every uh, the information reaches all the, uh, the information, okay? So you are, it's like as you are looking from very far for your network. So you cannot uh, detect the small interactions within the macro uh, cluster that you can obtain with the, eigen, the, the feeder eigenvector. So in, if you move towards a T star, which is a little uh, above the, the gap, what you what you're doing is to consider the inner uh, dynamic interaction of the cluster that you see in the uh, feeder eigenvector. The feeder eigenvector is not so distant from using random walk in a sense no? to uh, to find communities and to find modules in in the network. But the the uh, the, the the Laplacian random walk allow you to see your uh, uh, network by, it's like as you are looking at your network with a magnifying lens, which is opaque. So you cannot see the internal organization. You cannot do deep to realize any romanization process, okay? This is, it can be explained by this one. When you do when you do a, a community detection, typical community typically when you do community detection with uh, the maximization of modularity, hmm? the maximization maximization is mod modularity is a sort of maximization of Markov stability process. Okay, where uh, this is because this is a Markov stability dynamics hmm? uh, that is described by um, the random walk Laplacian, which is the Laplacian uh, multiplied by the inverse of uh, the degree on the left, so it's not symmetric. Um, uh, if you develop this uh, at first order with uh, the Taylor series, you this object becomes this object. So you are essentially uh, saying that which you are asking you're wondering which is PIBJ is the probability that uh, a random walker move from I to uh, not I to not J being in the same community. But this is the process where you, this is good, but you cannot appreciate the inner scales of your system. You only define one cluster approach. And this is uh, explained also by this, um uh this this figure here you have a star click network so you have a, a, a click with all the nodes connected with the others and a star with two nodes uh and a, and a bridge connecting the two structures if you see you can see that um the la, the, la, the susceptibility of the laplacian random walk uh is given by this uh, peak just one peak while the Laplacian symmetrical combinatorial Laplacian has two peaks. It means that the random walk allows you to discriminate <clears throat> the fact that the walker is in one of the two systems, but you don't know, you cannot discriminate the two systems. To do that, you have to put yourself on this peak and renormalize the system. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about the exponents? Because like in the old normalization group, we a lot of potential due to the exponents in the side to us and uh, different ways to get exponents. Exponents of the operator, you mean? Yeah, like the crypto exponents, the analog for the crypto exponents when you have a real scale. For every time of your decimation, you keep you get exponents of your like uh, variable, and then if you have the interface. But we Yes, but we didn't uh, investigate critical exponents at different uh, different scales so far. 
the only uh, critical properties that we obtain is the scale free uh, the scale invariance. It depends on the uh, the constant uh, of uh, the constant uh, specific heat or susceptibility. Okay, um, I'd like to, since you have uh, answered maybe a slightly technical question and then uh, more general one. So, since you mentioned that these are high heat vectors, um, you can make a graph um, embedding in, uh, in, in a three dimensional space by considering the first the theta eigenvectors. That also defines kind of a mesh and metric distance between nodes. Mm -hmm. um, so, does that renormalization scheme that we use uh, correspond to a grouping of nodes according to that metric distance because it's kind of related to the same. There is a relation. There is, there is a relation. Yes, if you if you have if you, if you are in the d dimension d dimension, there is a relation. But there is also a relation, uh, but we don't uh, uh, demonstrated this uh, with the uh, hyperbolic embedding. So you can, for example, this is what have been done by Marianne Gares uh, Serrano and Marianne Bogumnia. That is the renormalization of the brain. So every time you the, the, the process that it is the renormalization steps by fitting your network to an hyperbolic space uh, that is quite the same as you are saying in the dimension, there is a mapping between the two needles. We didn't demonstrate this, but it can be done, I think. Thanks. And uh, another question I had was that uh, this approach relies a lot on using the Laplacian for like graph diffusion. Uh, if I imagine like other types of dynamical processes on graphs, the finite graphs, and maybe with nodes that can have several. You can do it. States, uh, um, you can do it. Uh, Manlio de Domenico uh, uh, proposed uh, the, the same uh, formalism for a variety of dynamics, including uh, uh, epidemic contagion uh, and others, uh, and oscillations. Uh, the only, uh, you have two main uh, constraints. The first one is that you have, um, you need uh, an Hermitian matrix, so you you need uh, real eigenvalues. And the other thing, uh, I guess, is that the elements of your radiation C matrix uh, uh, are positive, so it must be unsigned. We are working on uh, signed uh, networks, uh, and uh, you can, in principle, define a Laplacian for signed uh, networks. Uh, and it's very interesting because uh, we demonstrated that with uh, the Laplacian of the, uh, in a, uh, uh, if you put, uh, if you map this uh, a network with uh, a signed, uh, a random distribution of signed uh, bonds to an easing problem, you can obtain a spin glass transition only considering topological considerations, only through topological considerations, by increasing the number of negative bonds. You move. So you can do it. You have to need, you need to uh, 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 respect the constraints about uh, at least the, uh, the positiveness of the your spectrum. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot for your uh, answers. And yeah, there's no more questions. Oh, just uh, like uh, using the communication decision matrix, uh, you, you, you used to, to do the trace clustering algorithm. And uh, regarding the brain clustering uh, application, did you find any, for example, uh, load integration, for example, of the, uh, a node that in, for example, in, is 
is among the visual cortex and with other other segregated areas of the brain or mm. do you find these these integrations or just separate uh, brain uh, systems or? uh yes they are not uh, uh, the clustering uh, doesn't happen in uh, within the macro loops so you can obtain the first step of the uh, of the the renormalization at the first step of the renormalization you have the basal ganglia that are uh, fused together with for example frontal regions okay there is a, a lot of clustering connections between uh, thalamus putamen uh, with the frontal region there is a projection a lot of projections on axons towards frontal region for example so you have uh, um, clusters of macro nodes that include nodes coming from different lobes different with different functions of course and this is quite uh, uh, in accordance to what is expected by the functional functionality of the these regions alone and how these fun these the regions uh interact by in integrated information during the execution of task, task for example and you mean by, for example, the some nodes from visual cortex to the sensory motor and uh, cortex, or uh, this, the, the visual cortex is uh, um, a particular lobe. You focus on a particular lobe, which is quite independent. It, it, uh, across the normalization process, of the, the visual the visual nodes, the nodes of the visual cortex, tend to cluster one to the other. Then at a certain point, it connects uh, to the temporal regions and to the uh, para, uh, parietal frontal regions of sensory motor. Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, let's start with Thank you.